I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to another episode of Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy most of the time. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and I'm going to introduce you guys to the Brotherhood of Cinema. First up, we got James Sullivan, also known as Jaime Tude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Tide Pods and Ugandan Knuckles, two <laughs> horsemen of the apocalypse for the internet. It's funny because in our first game, there was... Ugandan Knuckles as a player. He came in. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Cody Klusner. All proceeds from tonight's show will go towards the Prosthetic Prostitution Fund because even street girls need two legs to stand on. <laughs> and last but not Neither. least... <laughs> last but not least, we have our favorite Andy Schneider... Greetings and salutations. I'm here to represent the foreign films, as that is my specialty. Yes, indeed, because we're definitely going foreign for this one. We might talk about American ones as well, but we're talking about martial arts films. Any kind of movies that feature any kind of martial art fighting in, in them whatsoever. There's other stuff inside that genre as well. We're going to talk about that. It's going to be an open discussion, not selected films for this. We're just going to talk, you know, actors directors films in general anything that's cool awesome in the genre so um martial arts films is a uni unique uh genre of films especially for us americans because we love that shit back in the 70s that's where all the craze was i think it was in the 70s if i'm not wrong that's when it all started for us to discover all these films for us something like Bruce that Lee. yeah Bruce Lee uh, made it more popular, you know, with like Enter the Dragon and stuff. Back uh, then. Oh yeah, and well, he's he's the main one. Uh, there were a lot of factors uh, leading up to the success of uh, of seventies martial arts, and and when that when that uh, when that took off, there was um, there was just a explosion of martial arts uh, cinema so much. In fact, that uh, uh, they made they even end up making insane, crazy, obscure films, uh, trying to trying to knock off of Bruce Lee's success with other other actors like uh, Bruce Lai, Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee. <laughs> but um, but uh, one of the interesting things uh, that. Um, uh, that led to the success of martial arts cinema was, or uh, at, allegedly at least, and this is something that I, this is something that uh, I learned back in school uh, many years ago. So it's, it, it I actually kind of question it a little, little bit. It's debatable, but it was also, it also came up around the same time as black black exploitation cinema, which the, I. Which the idea of a lot a lot of black exploitation films was sticking it to the man, uh, rising up and 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 uh, and taking back. And um, in the case of martial arts cinema, uh, one of the one of the themes that they that they frequently focused on, and let's talk about Bruce Lee for a second because obviously represent um who here has seen the chinese connection yes i've, I've seen all of his main movies yeah uh probably all of it's uh all of it's um uh, spin-offs and, and various and whatnot um uh basically it's uh it's bruce lee playing a character uh uh, taking revenge for his master's death in a Shenzhen, Shenzhen, Shenzhen uh, in a uh, Japan-occupied China during World War II, and uh, so the common theme of rising up and taking back 
uh, was also was also there, and that's why a lot of uh, black exploitation audiences also gravitated towards martial arts cinema, and eventually made it rather successful. I think there's a whole list of uh, World War Two related martial arts movies. Uh, so, oh yes, uh, it's it's a, a trend to this day. You know, it movies like Ip Man apparently. Yep. yep. So that's a subgenre within within the genre. And um, so Bruce Lee uh, got his start off uh, playing Kato on uh, on the Green Hornet show, and uh, I believe it was Philip Tan who uh, uh, who talked him into uh, uh, making making movies uh, strictly for Chinese audiences, uh, and that was. That was uh, really where his career kicked off, and so that's why we had that's where we got movies like the the Chinese Connection, Way of the Dragon, and the Big Boss, which uh, uh, which eventually uh, once once the uh, uh, once we once the now uh, popularity reached reached the states. Warner Brothers says, "Hey, let's make a a movie with this guy. We'll call it uh, Enter the Dragon," and it was kind of a big hit. Now we have uh, now we have all kinds of we have international demand for uh, for kung fu movies, and that leads to another another Asian star um, <laughs> uh, to come about. Who I think we might, we uh, has had a, a much longer, more successful uh, career, arguably than than Bruce Lee. He was a stunt oh, for Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee died. I mean, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, it. I, no, I wasn't talking about Jackie Chan. I was talking about you and Bo. Everybody knows that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you and Bo. No, nobody here knows who that is, except for maybe you and me. <laughs> yes. Educate us, wise masters. Educate us. I mean, I I knew him most from uh, teaming up with Jackie Chan and Sammo Hung. Uh, mm-hmm. The three of them made a handful of movies in uh, the '80s, I think it was. And Yoon Biao has done others, you know, since then. And uh, I haven't seen many of them, but you know, it's like the Wheels on Meals, which mm-hmm. that is correct. That's, I didn't misspeak. It is called Wheels on Meals. Uh, yes. And uh, Dragons Forever. Uh, God, I'm trying to think of the other ones. I have, I have them in my collection. I just can't think of them right now. Uh, but that's where I saw him the most. And he's a very good martial artist. And for whatever reason, I guess he just didn't become as popular. Even Sammo Hung got his own TV show. Yes. Uh, martial Law. Martial Law. That was yeah. a good show. That was. Why was. Uh, why was. Uh... Why was Walker Texas Ranger on for so many years? But that show comes along. It actually has a guy who can really do some martial arts. <clears throat> because when season two came around, they decided to change a few stuff and give him a not to be racist or anything here, a black police officer as a partner. We can all see what they were trying to do right there, right? They were trying to make Rush Hour the series before they even tried to do Rush Hour the series. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 I like the, I, I like that, uh, uh, that partner has. But anyway, yeah. Isn't that Arsenio Hall? Yep. Arsenio yeah. Hall. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. They. Uh, I remember sitting down watch, watching that show, uh, one time with my brother, and got, my brother's looking over it and was like, "Is that a black Tim Curry?" <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <clears throat> wow! Oh. <laughs> I said, John, that's not Arsenio Hall. Oh, whoops. <laughs> he still has a career? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um, Jackie Chan, uh, Jackie Chan, Yuen Biao, and Sammo Hung, they all have something 
they all have something in common. And uh, uh, Andy, you might also be familiar with this. They were, they were what uh, they started their careers out in uh, in martial arts films as what they would as what they would call red trousers. Uh, are you familiar with that term? I have not heard that term myself. Ah. Uh, the red trousers uh, were um, uh, were martial were extras in martial arts movies stuntmen uh, who uh, who they would hire from the Beijing Opera House from which uh, Sammo Hung, Jackie Chan, and Yun right. Biao all graduated. Uh, this was uh, for those of you who don't know in Beijing. Just because you have an opera house, that doesn't mean necessarily that you're uh, singing opera there. You are also kicking ass and uh, doing all the things that, you know, if you actually sit down and watch an opera all the way through, there there are some very physical things uh, that some of the actors have to do. It's not just singing. But in in China, they took that to, an, uh, to the next level, and it was a... It was a brutal. Uh, it was a brutal routine. Not only would they teach you how to uh, how to sing, but they would also they would also teach you how to basically beat the crap out of your own body, and uh, and be, and get used to it. And so red trousers were people that they would hire uh, when they were making a a martial arts movie. There's in fact a, a documentary. Uh, about it uh, from the mid two thousands called uh, called Red Trousers. It's uh, it was something directed and made by Robin Shu, the actor who portrayed yeah. um, Liu Kang, Liu Kang, yeah. in Mortal Kombat, uh, which I highly recommend for people. And uh, uh, basically, these are the guys who uh, in in an American film. Let me put it this way: In an American film, if you if you film a scene with a, a stunt actor falling out a window, what you would get typically, and this is not all the time, but typically, um, you would you would have a slow motion shot of someone falling backward, and then cut to a shot of them hitting the ground on the bottom. Yeah. If you were a red trouser. Uh, that that's because that's because that's because this um, in the first shot what they're not showing you is that they have something to land on uh, after they exit the shot and in the second shot they're not falling from so bad of a distance okay fair enough uh, you're keeping the stuntmen in in, uh, uh, in, uh, in check here into consideration if you were a red trouser a shot like that wouldn't be two shots. It would be all in one shot, seeing you fall out of the window and land on the pavement from a second door, second story. And the only cushion that you would have is a pillow they stuck between your shoulder blades. That's how badass these guys were. Oh, yeah. Can you mention the graduation ceremonies for breaking all of your ribs in your freshman year? Aha! <laughs> yeah, those so... uh, old school martial artists. I mean, I've I've heard a few interviews from some of the, you know, the Jackie Chan and uh, uh, Yin Hua who did so a lot. He stunt double for Bruce Lee and Fist of Fury, uh, released here as Chinese Connection. Uh, you know, so he hearing them talk about what they went through back then to train and prepare for this is it's mind blowing like i don't know if they still do that to this day but it seems like something that probably doesn't happen anymore it's like a bygone era of stuntmen and martial artists that just i mean there's still great martial arts films that come out they just you know do it in a much more much more safe way uh, without so much bodily injury Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the uh yeah, so Jackie Chan comes out of this particular era. He's got a I think his his first big hit uh 
and here's here's some of the irony actually because uh, I used to I, I I remember as a kid buying uh, buying Jackie Chan movies off the off the rack, <laughs> and uh, and one of his uh, he uh, he actually started in the sequel of Chinese Connection, New Fist of Fury. Right. Yep. Um, supposedly he was an extra up... in the first one too. Yeah. Though I can't, I haven't spotted him in the background, but supposedly he is an extra in the first one. He's also an extra in. Uh, Enter, Enter, the the dragon. Enter the Dragon. Yeah, there's one shot where uh, Bruce Lee punches the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, in, uh, in in this uh, in this collection, you you have you have that, but you also have um, uh, you also have uh, a, his first big hit, I think, was Drunken Master. Yes. Where he yes. portrayed. Uh, he portrayed Wong Fei Hung, a, a character who, who a deserves. Folk hero. <laughs> he's a Chinese folk hero who deserves a, a debate and a discussion of his own because there's at least a uh, hundred uh, movies it's in like China. It's like two hundred something now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. so many. Yes, uh, and here's the thing: because because. Um, Chinese cinema has such a. At, Wang Fei Hung was an actual person, I believe, in, in Chinese history. Yep. But because Chinese cinema and Chinese folklore has such a way of weaving history in and out with each other, um, this is how they get away with uh, having so many different movies about his life. Uh, none of which are actually. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing none of which are actually true. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Yeah, probably not. Uh, I mean, uh, inspired by actual events here and there, I'm sure, but for the most part, I, having watched, I, I don't even know, a dozen or so movies starring the character, uh, yes. they're all very different. To, I mean, the Jackie Chan take on Drunken Master and Legend of Drunken Master is so different than like Jet Li and Once Upon a Time uh, in China. Yes. So it's just very drastically different. Uh, but all great movies, by the way. All the Once Upon a Time in China and the Drunken Master movies, very good. And then the irony we ha the irony is that we have uh, uh, we we once run we once again come around to Sammo Hung and uh, and around the world in eighty days playing Sammo playing Wang Fei Hung alongside <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yes. So. Yeah, at some at some point, everybody everybody we mentioned in this uh, in this podcast, maybe Bruce Lee even played Wong Fei Hung at some point. We just don't know about. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um. But yes, once yes, the Once Upon a Time in China films. Actually, my favorite, uh, my favorite, um, uh, my favorite in that in that particular series uh, is one one that's more of an offshoot than a. Uh, than a uh, part of the canon. Uh, be, uh, who here has seen Iron Monkey? Oh yeah, I, of course. I may have once upon a time, but I'm not too sure. It's on my uh, shelf, right over there. Okay. <laughs> I, sh I should own it because I freaking lo I I freaking loved that when I saw that. It's it's young Wang Fei Hung meeting up with the uh, meeting up with the uh, in his childhood uh, meeting up with the. Uh, a Chinese Robin Hood character who calls himself Iron Monkey, stealing from the tax man. And his father is played by Donnie Yen, who is who also fought Wong Fei Hung in Once Upon a Time in China Two, I think it was. Oh, wow! They, you mean he's like he must be inbreeding all over this thing. <laughs> Donnie Yen, <laughs> Donnie Yen is the unsung hero of martial arts films. He didn't really, I mean, I don't. He's been around for a say while, that. but. He, he's really blown up in recent years with the Eatmon series since 2008, was it? I guess I could look it up on here, but yeah, that's when he exploded. But he's been in so many movies, and he was I, the only good thing in Star Wars World One. The only good thing. Are you sure? Oh, 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 God, we are we are <laughs> going to debate that. People came out of Rogue One saying, "I I really really loved that that one guy. Uh, he really saved the movie." I, I like the whole movie, but that's just me. But, yeah. 
But um, I'm just surprised. I'm like, Johnny Yen, people don't know who he is over over here so much. Well, he's, uh, he's done a lot of stunt work and uh, action choreography for Hollywood movies. And like the Blade Two, I know he, he had a brief, brief role in, but he also did the action choreography. Which uh, was great. Yes, it was very good. Uh, I like that movie, too. Blade uh, 2 is one of the better films in that series. Yes, I agree. Um, uh, and, oh, oh, before we go any further, I don't, I don't want to... Uh, Mike, I don't want to skip over uh, Michelle Yao and Cynthia Rothrock. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, okay, yes, yes, um... Uh, Oddly enough, they were together with Yes, Madam. Um, I believe it's also called In the Line of Duty as well in other countries. They were in together. Also called uh, Police Assassins. It's, it has different names, but yeah, I, I actually, that was my first foreign DVD I bought, was that movie. Because <laughs> um, I was like, Michelle Yao and Cynthia Rarock together? I was like, whoa, that's wicked. And uh, it was pretty cool. I actually did see another Michelle Yao movie for this podcast as well. Because she is, she's amazing, actually. Uh, and it's interesting, because this one has multiple titles as well. Uh, the movie I watched was called uh, Magnificent Warriors. I think it's also called, if I remember correctly, I don't know. But it's set during the 1930s. And uh, it's the 1930s during the like Japan-China kind of, J Japan taking over China war thing and it's in the 1930s she flies uh, another a... world war ii sort of deal yeah so she's like a kind of like a spy a adventurer as they quote it's kind of like indiana jones kind of feel to it she flies a plane and she's got like this r rope uh hook that she uses in in her choreography like there's like this one scene and she's like throwing it around and, like hitting the guys in the face and it's pretty cool doing that so michelle yeah she yeah with a grapple yes Yes, the grapple. Thank you. She fights with a grapple. It's very cool when she does that. But yeah, it's, and it's also like tongue in cheek. There's a little bit of comedy. There's like a comedic kind of character that kind of goes along with the the adventure. It is a really good movie. It's from like 1987. It is a really good movie. I uh, I saw it in an English dub. I know dubs are very meh in the uh, foreign world. You gotta watch the sub versions. I mean, so that's right. Watch subtitles, damn it. <laughs> Nobody watches the sub versions, but for me, especially in martial arts movies, the English dub is like uh, infamous in a way because it makes it more like funny in a way because you kind of like the voices that the characters would come up with or whoever does the English dub is kind of funny. Just watching the English dub version of it. Um. Actually, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to side. I'm going to uh, sort of uh, play devil's advocate here and say, yes, if you want to, if you're in the mood, if you're in the mood to focus solely on the film, I say, I say, try and get a sub version of the, of the movie. If if you're if you're like me though, and you have to turn away and work on something else, or if if you're just drifting out to sleep and you like at like at least like to understand what the characters are saying uh that's when the dubbed version comes in handy but yeah uh, yeah so i mean it, it's the same way with anime as well so it's just that's a, a, a big debate but yeah michelle yao is, he, is a is a big big key player in the martial arts cinema as well because she's the, like the female you think of in that genre right uh crouching tiger hidden dragon uh, the super cop films uh alongside yeah. jackie chan um i believe uh, uh, she did one with donnie yin uh uh butterfly and sword i think or butterfly sword i think i think I, I have that one i may have seen that i may have seen that yeah yeah but, donnie but, yen once again yeah appreciate it yep <laughs> butterfly and sword yep okay um yeah we i believe we were uh, introduced uh, uh us us westerners were introduced to michelle yao in a bond film yes tomorrow uh, never dies yeah tomorrow never dies 
That's probably one of the... One of Pierce Brosnan's least annoying films. True. Oh. Golden Guy was, in my opinion, his best one. That's just me. Okay. Yeah, that's... Yeah, my pick, yeah. Yeah, that's probably the the main exposure to us Americans. I mean, and, and then, you know, years later, a few years later, we had Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's probably the, the key one for her. Um, Cemented. She was in the uh, in a Mummy movie. The Mummy 2 and the Dragon Emperor. What the fuck? Uh, <laughs> that was the one with Jet Li in it. I didn't even see it. I love uh, Jet Li. I that's didn't... funny. Well, yeah, they... Yeah, that 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 movie just killed the franchise. I mean, the first two Mummy movies were fun, uh, fun little blockbusters. But the third one, when you when you water down the fact that you ripped off Indiana Jones so many times to the point where you're just co- blatantly copying over scenes from Raiders of the Lost Ark and Last Crusade, you're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's. The- that's the thing. Um, because see if you have... Saw, uh, huh? Go on. I wanted to say, as, as for us Americans, we had a lot of other, like, quote, American martial arts uh, cinema Jean-Claude film. Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jean-Claude Van Damme is probably the one that introduced a lot of Americans to that kind of style uh, in their movies. Ben Johnson, don't you mean? That's that's a good that's a good show. If you have don't if you don't have Prime Video, check the show out. It's very funny. Oh my god, it's really good. It's a really good show. It is a really good show. Uh, but yeah, Jean Claude Van Damme is I. He's my favorite actor. Like I watch his movies whenever I can. My God, like Bloodsport. My goodness. Oh. Did you, uh, did you see uh, Universal Soldier Regeneration? It was straight to DVD. Uh, uh, I tend to. I stopped after the first one. I actually, I actually think it's my favorite Universal Soldier movie. Really? It's really. It's actually. I mean, it's not like a good movie, but the action is made in such a way that it's it's a fun movie to watch. Uh, and you know they actually have some good choreography in there and some good action scenes and set pieces. It was much better than I thought it would be. And I, it was good enough that I bought it. So, huh, okay. Give it a shot. I might, I might have to revisit the whole fr- franchise in general. It's been a while since I've seen them. Um, don't don't watch the the one with Michael Jai White in it. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that was him, wasn't it? I, it was the second. <laughs> him and oh, Bill yes, Goldberg. Michael Michael Jai White, the other uh, the American unsung hero yes, of martial arts. Eric, uh, so disappointed he never made it big because he is really good. Yeah, he's uh, he's done a lot of yeah a lot of direct to video like stuff. Bone is a good one. Oh it's yeah, more, I've more heard of that. Oh oh no. What? Coming soon. The third movie, Shanghai Dawn. What? Shanghai Noon, they had Shanghai Nights coming soon to be announced. Shanghai Dong, the third movie in the Shanghai movies. Oh boy. I love the first one, didn't care for the second one. Mm. I don't know how to feel about this. Mm. <laughs> no, but, uh. Oh, man. Um. Yeah, Jacques Claude Van Damme's one of them. Michael J. White. I especially love Michael in, uh, Black Dynamite. That's probably the one. <laughs> Who's interrupting my kung fu? That, that was a funny movie. That was. I like that one. Um, Bloodsport, I haven't seen, but I'm pretty sure some folks are aware of the controversy surrounding that film. Uh, or, yeah, yeah. There's there's some a little bit of controversy with that, but it's still a, a lot of controversy around that. Th- there is, but people don't normally talk about it a lot that's the thing they, they... And it's not john Clyde Dam's fault but... no it's not it's no his uh but the damn that film and then kickboxer like the kickboxer franchise is still going they, they had like kickboxer vengeance the last time with uh i tried to watch i tried to watch the last one and it was bad i couldn't make it through like a half hour of it <laughs> yeah okay. that's Actually, you're forgetting about my favorite john Claude van damme movie Time cop. No. I showed him for the first time. 
I showed it for the first time. You kind of like, eh. Um, no, what Before was it? That. What was that? Uh, Ain't no stopping us. No one does it better. Oh, crap. What is that movie? Crap. Breaking. Oh. Oh, that's right. He did. <laughs> he did have, like, a bit, like, a little in Breaking. Oh, my God. That's right. He oh. was a street dancer in the end of the first <laughs> sequence. Oh, my God. I remember that now. Oh, my God. Uh... I did enjoy Time Cop. Um, I'll, I'll admit my uh, my introduction to to Van Damme. Maybe I could have maybe I could have uh, selected uh, a better uh, choice of movies uh, to start to start watching with his career because uh, I was watching because I saw a few things like Legionnaire and uh, Street Fighter the movie and. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> some um, of those uh, some of those Universal Soldier sequels and I'm just like this guy sucks oh, there's oh, oh, there's knock off knock off <laughs> where Rob Schneider puts up a better fight than he does oh oh snap um no I mean Jean Claude was like probably my first introduction to like martial arts movies when I was a kid to like Kickboxer and Bloodsport. Yeah. Uh, Same. And then from there it was like the Mortal Kombat movie, which oh, yes. the choreography a little yep. bit. Uh, and so that was like, wow, this fighting is even like I've never seen anything like this. And then, you know, Crouching Tiger and Matrix. And from there I ventured out to like uh, Fist of Legend with Jet Li and. Legend of Drunken Master with Jackie Chan, all these, I went to the foreign market and discovered what I'd been missing all these years. Like, <laughs> I, Jean-Claude, I still have this nostalgia connection to, but, you know, he just doesn't hold a candle to those guys. True. Yeah, with, um, yeah, we we did kind of have a, a second coming of the of the martial arts genre in the late 90s, and there were, the, you just nailed every every aspect of it right there uh, in terms of what brought it brought it on one uh, Jackie Chan uh, becoming an international star during the time and the other uh, the Matrix which I still stand by saying it's a it's a great fun little series I uh, first one's a classic um, but uh, when even uh, even though Keanu Reeves kind of uh, uh, put shame on himself with um, uh, Master of Tai Chi or, or Tai Chi Man or whatever. Man of Tai Chi. Man of Tai Chi. That one. Yes, he destroyed all of his credibility in one one fail in one fight se- sequence. But um, in all seriousness, uh, the reason why the reason why the film films like Matrix, The Matrix, and later. Uh, not not too long afterward, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, were successful is be- is not because, not just because they were martial arts movies, but we, they were martial arts movies that introduced a, a lot of fantasy into the fighting aspect of itself. They, uh, you know, this they were the ones that said, hey, let's stick these guys on on wires and launch them through the air. Uh, like Peter Pan, and um, I mean that stuff's been going on and was going on in China long before in the we in never Hong Kong knew film. About it. Yeah, exactly. We never knew about it. We're like, what is this? But it's like we've been doing this for years. Yeah. Uh, you you guys need to catch up over here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we choreographed the uh, Jet Li with a uh, with a fight sequence involving ladders. What have you done? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, after that we have, oh yes, and, uh, the, uh, the, uh, American population, uh, uh, no, the American, uh, popularization of Jet Li, who, at that time, had had two decades under his belt, but we had no idea who he was. 
Uh, we just knew there was this really cool guy in the in the final uh, Lethal Weapon movie, and let's release some of his movies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then he started having the uh, Kiss of the Dragon and the One and uh, Romeo Must Die and. Uh, God, wasn't there another one around that time? I can't remember. But yeah, all these were string of American Cradle movies. to the Grave. Uh, Cradle yeah. to the Grave, that's it. Yes. Uh, not all actually, good, but... <laughs> huh? They're not all good movies, but... You know. No, it's... Uh, it, was a, it was a formula that uh, producer Joel Silver had uh, put together at the time. Uh, he's like, okay, I just... I got popular with the. I had a hit with these Matrix movies. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do with this guy and make some more martial arts movies. Actually, one of the best, one of the best displays of uh, Jet Li's uh, martial arts skills is probably the film Black Mask, which uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if anyone here has seen that one, but uh, it's on my shelf. I have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a surprise at this point. <laughs> It's. I I, re I remember being a kid reading the, the review for that one, and it said uh, the the title of the review was dubbed and dumber. And uh, you know maybe the maybe the U.S. dub did take some liberties. Uh, I think they threw in a lot of cussing just because they could. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you sit, if you sit back and just sort of let yourself. Uh, submit yourself to the movie. It's a, it's, it's a terrific combination of uh, of superheroism and martial arts. Really dark. If you if you like stuff like Batman, this is sort of this is the sort of thing that kicks it up another level. Which Batman? <laughs> and you are exited from the conversation. Uh. <laughs> No, actually, the only one that counts, Ben Affleck, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you're at, you're out of the conversation too. Bloop. <laughs> um, you are out of the conversation twice as fast there. <laughs> um, I would take George Clooney again over that guy. <laughs> wow. Whoa. It's. I don't know if I'd even go that far. It's funny because <laughs> it's funny because there is that scene in Batman and Robin where Robin's doing the laundry, <laughs> that whole laundry scene. It has that, like, aesthetic of... Uh, uh, point of order. Batman forever. There you go. <laughs> and, <laughs> and... Now I'm going to somewhere with this, because I did f I did find a movie that did have a laundry man doing martial arts and using laundry as wanting the... as the fighting style. And it... <laughs> I swear, I guess Bad Robin did have influence because of that because there's a movie i can't remember the title of it now because it's a it's a weird title but it's from 1981 and it, i don't know what the cast but it's just the guy is doing laundry and he's like taking the you know laundry and just taking the water out of it just like robin did in the batman robin movie he's like whoosh, whoosh, you know he's like scrubbing out like scrub scrub scrubbing and when he's fighting at the end he's like you know scrub scrub and he's like really rubbing hard on him and he's like taking the hair there's that one point in the movie, he was taking the hair, ripping the hair out of the guy's hair, just as as they were fighting. He was ripping the hair out of the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could rip the hair out of your hair. It was so the like ancient martial arts technique. <laughs> <laughs> we, shall, uh, we shall extract a follicle from follicle. There's um. It's also like in the movie too. It's um. There's a scene where there's a fight between two, like, dragons, like the dragon puppets. So the guys are doing the dragons that are fighting with each other with in the dragon costumes. It was pretty cool. It's like There's, like, one dragon here, and it's, like, dragon here. They're, like, kicking with each other. It was pretty cool. Um, God, I can't remember the fucking title of that movie. I need to share that because it's a really good movie. It was very... I feel like I've seen that, but I cannot... I, I've seen so many martial it's arts a... movies. That one is not sticking out, but... It... It sounds familiar. It's um, because in the English dub, they call the guy Peanut, which is weird. I think in the original movie, it was called Mauser. Um, oh. God, what the hell is it called? Hold on. I can't think of it. It was it was different and unique. Um, so I, I was watching that one. It was pretty cool. I think it's the same director. It's the same director. I looked this up. The same director did that one, and he actually directed the sequel to 
hidden dragon, crouching tiger, mm. sword of destiny, same director. Mm-hmm. Then the Netflix own series, <laughs> the Netflix the sequel, I should say. Yud Wu Ping. So the I mean that guy's huge. As yeah. A martial arts choreographer and yeah. director. Right yeah. There. Stunt man. I mean actor. He's yeah. Tall. Yeah, that's, he's, he's, yeah, that's. I mean, he's the one with like the Crouching Tiger, the original, and the. Uh, and the uh, Matrix. Like mm-hmm. that's where he became so popular. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, Actually, it's, it's talking about. Uh, oh, crap. What? I said eighty-one, I so that should pop up as a clue. I believe he was also the director of Drunken Master. I think you might be right. Let me take a look again. Yep, you and Wu Ping. Yeah. Hey. Uh, he had, hmm? Dreadnought, that's the one you're talking about. Yes, thank you. That's the I can think... guess who stars in that, who we talked about earlier, UPL, <laughs> the third guy from the Tamil Hung and Dick. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> All right, I, I didn't know who... Okay, that makes sense now. Okay. Yeah, that's the film. It was, that was one of them I watched. I was like, damn, because they... Um... Yeah, that was pretty cool, because I... The dragon costumes were really cool. They fighting each other, and there was like, like I said, it was laundry. I was like, a laundryman, and he's like, I was like, whoa, just flipping the laundry around. <laughs> it's like whoa. Uh, yeah, I think there's uh, there's um, uh, maybe I maybe I haven't seen uh, this particular film, but I, I I've definitely seen some. Uh, quote unquote martial arts uh, laundry <laughs> laundry scenes out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't believe I'm actually saying that martial arts laundry. <laughs> it is. It is a thing. But when you watch Jackie Chan, though, you can have martial arts anything. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. You know that's his style typically. Is but anything, I, everything. But I noticed that in just everything's a everything's a weapon. If it's in the room, use it. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's not just Jackie Chan. I think it's I think it's like kind of a thing in every martial art movie is to take anything that's in the room and use it to your advantage. I've noticed that when watching yeah, a few was, of them. Uh, he not, not he kind of made it a staple surprising. though. Yeah, like if you look at Jet Li, he almost never does. Um, well, I didn't say I, every, but like it's a majority, like some. I've noticed. Like I've watched like a few, and I noticed like oh, it's taking the taking a broom or taking a piece of wood or just, you know. Well, ha- will, will Jet Li, does Jet Li have this on his resume that he's ever trapped a guy in a recycle bin before and smacked the crap out of him with his lid? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has, but he has uh, on his resume beating up a guy with a sword using his belt. So he has that on his resume. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> That was that was a that was the best part of that fight. Just going. <laughs> the uh, fists of legend for those fists of uh, legend. remake of uh, fists of fury or Chinese connection, whatever you want to call it. And then later so. remake with Donnie Yen as fists of fury, the TV series, mm. which I never saw. Uh, you probably yeah. make up a conspiracy theory that they, all these movies, all these actors, are movies are all in one shared universe. Well, you know, speaking of that. Uh, uh-huh. So if you guys ever saw Fearless, Jet, Jet Li's movie in the mid two thousands, the character he plays, Bo Yun Ja, is uh, based on an actual folk hero that existed, uh, and he is the master of Chen Zen, who is Bruce Lee's character and Jet Li's character in those movies. So they're avenging the character that Jet Li played in Fearless. So. He's kind of avenging himself when you think yes. about it. <laughs> wow. Yes. Whoa. So watch, watch Fearless, then watch Fist of Legend <laughs> back to back, and it's like one continuous thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that does make sense. Cause, oh, oh. I'm about to go into spoiler, spoiler territory. Um, <laughs> Just watch the movies, people. Watch the movies. Psst, spoilers, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm not even. I, I'm not even gonna let you know what I'm thinking right now. Ooh. You have to watch the movies. Um. Uh. Let's see here. Um. 
I'll, I'll just say that uh, the major plot point uh, does not involve Tide Pods. <laughs> uh, but the um, <clears throat> Mike, you all, you also brought up something that earlier that uh, that uh, that I wanted to dive into a little bit further. Uh, renaming martial arts movies. Oh God. yes, yeah. Oh, this is the one thing that can it can either hurt uh, hurt your movie or. It, it very rarely makes it any better. Um, but one thing, I think, uh, for for the longest time, 70s and 80s, uh, they uh, companies found the cheap and easy way to keep making money off the same project product. Re-release the same titles under different labels mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. after a couple of years. That's why we have Jackie Chan's spiritual kung fu which is a, a movie where he plays uh, a, a Shaolin a student who get, gets into trouble um, ends up uh, finding out that the that the library at the temple is is populated by ghosts that look like that look like raggedy end dolls no kidding long red flowing hair and start and learns from them the lost martial arts of Shaolin or something like that. Uh, years later, Spiritual Kung Fu is re-released as Karate Ghostbuster. <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> because it's not karate. It's Kung Fu. And two, he's never, he doesn't bust the ghosts. But guess what movie came out around that time that was popular in the U.S.? <laughs> wow. Platoon. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, Actually, but, I was I mean, going to go for my science project, but whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the renaming also goes a little, uh, because I've noticed, you know, I've, said it a couple times fist of fury aka chinese connection but so there's a lot of confusion with some of bruce lee's early movies two of them to be specific one being big uh the big boss that was released in the u.s as fist of fury and then fist of fury which was released in the u.s as chinese connection and so it can get a little confusing when talking about those movies if you say fist of fury which one are you talking about um for no reason they renamed it because why not uh, and I know mm -hmm. after uh, Ong Bak came out Tony Jaw's big breakout Thai oh, yeah. martial arts hit uh, he released uh, Tom Yum Goon also released here as the protector but elsewhere in other countries it was released as Ong Bak 2 even though it has no connection to that movie whatsoever he's just playing a completely different character but it's Tony Jaw and they want to capitalize on popularity, so they're going to call it Ong Bak 2. Mm -hmm. And then they made an Ong Bak 2 that doesn't really have anything to do with Ong Bak anyway, further capitalizing on the popularity of Ong Bak. I mean, it's it's really weird how some of that works out. Uh, or, yeah, the... Um, yeah, but, uh, we've, we've gone on enough about Jackie Chan. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about Tony Jaw. Yes? Oh, wait, P Cody, you were going to say something? Well, I was going to continue on with that story when it comes to renaming movies or you could do like we did stateside and just hit the fuck out of them like with Jackie Chan's police story First Strike was released over here as Jackie Chan First Strike that was released as its own movie and it was edited the hell out of I mean mm -hmm. I would say right now watch the TV version because that actually has some of the deleted scenes worked in oh yeah we uh, J the, uh, Jackie Chan's films have been uh, here's here's my my thesis when it comes to a lot of Jackie Chan's uh, body of work. It's not, it's uh, it uh, the way that um, the way that it's edited. Yeah, a lot of them are or re-edited even. A lot of them are kind of clunky, but uh, they're not really focused too much on story. They're focused on trying to put on a stunt show, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's why you get a lot of enjoyment out of watching. Uh, these guys uh, do all these crazy stunts and martial arts with each other, but at the same time, you don't really, 
you don't really feel much or get too much of an emotional connection with a lot of them. I think um, and that's where that's where some of that's where some of them have not aged well. I, I still I still look back on movies with uh, like um, uh, I'm I'm gonna have to show uh, I'm gonna have to show uh, you guys uh, City Hunter one of these days. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is better than me. I yeah. ripped, I downloaded all of my stuff. Uh, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so. Um, in terms of renaming, there's a really bad case of uh, of renaming uh, that I was I was actually going to mention with a uh, one of Jackie Chan's earlier movies. Uh, when I got it on video cassette, it was called Snake Fist Fighter, but the more popularized cut of the movie is Master with Cracked Fingers. Hmm. And the reason why this this movie is legendary is because. It's actually Bruce Lee's first movie uh, that he lead starred in, but it's a second generation cut. Uh, they took the film uh, Master uh, Little Tiger from Taipei, I think is the name of it, um, which uh, which was a movie that Jackie made when, when he was seventeen. Uh, going up against uh, gangbusters and whatnot. After the success of Drunken Master, they reshot half of the movie. But this was years later, and Jackie Chan had aged quite significantly. Uh, he was not he was not willing to come back and uh, and play the same role. So they had so they got uh, they. They got a lot of actors from uh, Drunken Master to come in and reshoot scenes for this, for this second cut, against a stand-in for Jackie Chan. Sounds a little like Game of Death. Of course, that was for different <laughs> they reasons. Pulled a, that was for they different pulled reasons, a Game but... of Death with this. Yeah. And, it, and I feel kind of amazed because uh, the recut and reshooting the scenes and everything, it makes it look like they were trying to recapture the chemistry and with the action and comedy that the drunken master had but it's also uh, it's also kind of laughable at the same time and the fact that I ha still to this day have a have a, a third generation cut on video snake fist fighter which just seems like a generic title uh, but they uh, they take some very strange training methods uh, that Jackie's character as a young boy goes through and puts them near the end of the movie. Uh, the, the old master trains him in martial arts by having him take off his clothes and get in a bag full of snakes. Wow. Well, that's one way to get a Prince Albert. <laughs> they cut... They, they do something crazy here. They just... They take the beginning of the film chop it off, place it near the end right before the climax and the way that it always cut in there was as a, sort of a, some, some, some sort of attempted flashback was always so clunky to me, so now that I know all this I'm going to, what did I watch? <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, we were going to go about Ch Tony Jaw Yeah, Tony Jaw Ong Bak is his Ong Bak. biggest claim to fame in my opinion uh, I, you know, Protector is not bad. Mm -hmm. He has some good stunt work. I mean, the one long shot of him going up the big spiral staircase, I mean, that's pretty impressive. You know, there's that scene at the end where he, like, literally breaks a bone in every person's body that he fights, and he goes against, like, 30 people or something, and oh, breaks yeah, a bone on each and every one. Uh, is that the, uh, the barroom brawl sequence, or? Uh, that wasn't in a bar. That was in front of the, the elephant. Oh, uh, the oh, dead yeah. elephant. Are we thinking of the same movie here? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe. The protector. I'm going oh, the protector. Yeah, oh. I, say, I know what Andy's talking about. I know this one this time. I know this one. <laughs> you know this one. Okay, let's hear you talk about it. I haven't watched it in a while because the first time I watched it, <laughs> half the subtitles were missing. Oh. Seriously, you hear them talk and nothing would appear on the bottom. Like, but five minutes ago, you just had subtitles. What happened? 
What are they saying? <laughs> Still kick ass, though. Still kick ass. Oh, oh, yeah, the... At a, at a time... At a time when... When Jackie Chan and Jet Li are starting to show their age, I say that with the greatest respect because Jackie Chan is still body freaking sliding down the side of a mountain. Um, um, Tony Ja is is I guess the best way you could uh, describe him is sort of a in in the U.S. is sort of a starlet, but he was a. Uh, He's good. He was good coming up, and with the with those with his his particular batch of movies, it was uh, for me. I can't particularly remember any stories, but I do remember sitting back and watching a bunch of Tony Jaw films. And Thai boxing is another one of those cases of you just don't give a rip if you're you will need uh, they. They like to use their knees. They really knees like to elbows. use those knees. Knees and, knees and elbows. elbows. <laughs> that's how they. That's how they do it. They. They barely ever throw a full punch, but you will be surprised at how much strength is in this, as opposed to this when you're when you're in a, a the right distance, and these guys will smack into each other just, uh, just like crazy. Um, watching Tony Jaw's films, uh, you know, you'll see you'll see the stuff again where, uh, like the early, it it harkened back to the earlier days of the Red Trouser Beijing Opera House stuff, where you would see actual actors, uh, actual martial artists doing their own fights, falling backward, and hitting, and you know, smacking into a statue or something. And literally getting the wind knocked out of them. These guys are all uh, Tony Jaw movies. He doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he makes full contact in a lot of those hits, and you can tell. I mean, his his elbow just connects, and you can see it connect. You know, or his knee, and you know, the beeple falling, like you said. I mean, it's the it's one of those things you don't to, see very often. The climax to own own back to. Which I think I, I remember enjoying a little bit more than the first one for whatever reason. Um, yeah, that I'd I'd forgotten every con any connection uh, to the to the first song box. So I anything you say about it having no connection, I'm just like whatever. <laughs> um, but I did uh, I remember watching the the climactic fight to that and just. Uh, I don't wince too often for in a, while watching a movie without a good reason. This was a this was a fight where it's like, Ugh, these guys are really hurting each other. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the on box sequels, but they do have good fights in them. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Uh, I still I still also have yet to watch the Raid Redemption. So do you want to talk about let's talk about those for a second Ooh. because you want to talk you about did episodes brutal. on those <laughs> yes I did uh, a review that was my very first DVD shelf foreign flicks was the Raid Redemption uh, because it has it and its sequel are like my some of my favorite modern martial arts movies along with Eat Mon uh, the Eat mm -hmm. Mon films uh, and like Fist of Legend and Legend of Drunken Master you know movies from the last 20-30 years mm -hmm. being modern um, but the Raid series, you know, being the first, like, big martial arts movies to come out of Indonesia, like, nobody has thought about Indonesia as filmmakers in the U.S. Uh, no, but apparently even come. Uganda has their martial arts cinema. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, though, ironically, it's, uh, they're both directed by a Welshman, uh, written and directed by a Welshman. Uh, oh, Raid. wow. Uh, yeah, the story being he was there to do a documentary on Salat, the, the martial arts style, uh, and then he met the star uh, of the two films, Iko Uwais, if I totally probably butchered his name, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, and then they made the film Morantel, uh, which is really good. I think it's 
one of them that doesn't get seen as much as the raid films. People don't talk about it as much. Uh, it's far less intense and brutal uh, as the raid films are. But Morantau, check it out. Check it out. I highly mm -hmm. recommend it. But the raid films come along, and here <laughs> you have this like return to you know Tony Jaw up the brutality of fight scenes a bit uh, from where we had seen with the uh, the Jackie Chans and even Jet Li. Mm -hmm. you know, Tony Jaw brought this full contact and this looked hard and looked painful, and then the raid comes along and talk oh. about punching during the movie. And you're you know you watch it and you're like oh my god, I mean it looks. You can tell that they use CGI enhancement sometimes and, you know, mm -hmm. whatnot. They, they do things. They're not actually hurting these people like that. But some of the stuff they pull off is brilliant. I mean, they oh, are yeah. really good at what they do. At the so, raid, uh, I, I've only seen the first one. <laughs> I'd, I'd say the best way to describe it is uh, in Indonesian diehard to a, to a certain degree because... Yeah, more or less. More or less. Uh, you got, you got, uh, you got the uh, uh, entire team of uh, commandos trying to go in and do a drug bust, but everyone inside the building is loaded to the gills and not ready to let these guys out with their with their drug lords. So, um, it is. It, it, I remember watching that, and that was. That was a vicious film. I had to sit. I had to sit back and sort of stomach it afterward, and I don't usually do that very often. But I, I remember feeling sorry specifically for the for the captain who got his nap snacked in the in that one part. Yeah. And it was just the way that that scene, uh, the way that they build up to that, and the way that that's all that's all executed, and the way he gets dragged out of there afterward. I was like. <laughs> I didn't even know this guy very well, but that, that, that mean, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it is, they are intense films, uh, but they are, I mean, some of the best choreography and cinematography of fight scenes that I've seen in a while. I mean, mm -hmm. they know, they know how to choreograph, they know how to act out the scenes, and uh, the guy knows how to film them well, so that they come off, I mean, on screen you know it's none of this super close up so you can't tell what's happening not a bunch of quick cuts so you can't tell what's happening you know mm -hmm. he does some longer shots and far away shots I mean you see it all uh, and I just I would love for him to make another one uh, they're supposedly making a third uh... supposedly yeah that's been in talks for years and as last I heard uh, the writer and director, uh, Gareth Evans, uh, wanted to move on from that for a while. And now Eco Uwais, the star, is doing other projects as well. He's doing like a triple threat that's coming out, I think, this year with Michael Jai White and Scott Atkins, another underrepresented martial artist. Uh, and, you know, some other projects he's done. Uh, Headshot was what an Indonesian film he did. Um, but I, I honestly, I don't know if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're we're really oh, we're really dipping into into territory here. Eco Uways, I'm looking out. But apparently, he had a role in Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Yes. Yeah, yeah. J.J. Yeah. Abrams liked the raid, and so he cast him <laughs> and and the the guy that he works with the most, uh, Yayan. Uh, I can't pronounce the last name. Uh, but so in the in the raid movie, he was the one that snapped the guy's neck. So those two are in like all the movies together, uh, like Morantau, both raid films, uh, and they do the choreography together. So they were both in The Force Awakens, very briefly, uh, but only because J.J. Abrams saw the raid and liked it, and so brought him in for a little cameo. They didn't fight or anything, but they were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're just there. They're cool. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't it the um? Wasn't it like the the uh? What was that scene? It was when uh, Ray and Finn first meet with uh, Han and Chewie, and then those two opposing gangs come on the ship. 
Yeah. And uh, so one gang was, you know, these white guys yeah. with some accent. I can't remember which. And then the other one was the raid guys. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. I can say I remember so, that. So many and, just to make, that movie. and just to make things even more confusing, I looked up the director. I took one look at the name Gareth Evans. I was like, wait a minute, the guy... Oh, no, wait, I'm not thinking of Gareth <laughs> Evans. I was thinking of Gareth Edwards. Got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> wrong person. Um, wrong Gareth. Yeah. Um, wrong Gareth. The, the other film that I watched um, was actually Brandon Lee's first. Oh, yeah. I, I watched Legacy of Rage. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Uh, oh, Brandon Lee, I mean, son of Bruce Lee, he uh, he does good job. There's he's he's most famous for The Crow, obviously, which he, mm -hmm. but he also yeah. did he also did like a buddy cop showdown, uh, showdown in Little Tokyo. Yeah, right? yep, yep, with Duff Lundgren. Yep, um, yeah. he also did um, Rapid Fire. But yeah, the his first his first movie he ever did was Legacy of Rage, and it features very little martial arts but when you see him do martial arts it is amazing um he does actually implicate items like there's an alley scene he picks up like trash can lids and throws them at the the guys it's pretty funny <laughs> but basically um it's a revenge kind of story obviously because most martial art movies are about revenge kind of stories like something happened and then they have to go back for revenge um the acting is top notch, even though I watched the English dub, yeah, um, <laughs> of it. So um, that it was his only Hong Kong movie that he did before coming to the U.S. for stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty decent stuff with that. He he uh, for television he was gonna do he did well his first TV movie they did was um, Kung Fu the movie which would be the movie that was a sequel to the kung fu series from the 70s uh, uh, with uh kate with uh kwai jung king yeah and david carradine playing a playing a chinese guy <laughs> yes <laughs> he's a dancer yeah. not a oh you know they wanted bruce lee for that role right yeah yeah. 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 And a year later, they actually filmed the pilot for Kung Fu The Next Generation. So he would have had a, a bit part in that, but didn't go that far. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brandon Lee, he, re if, uh, he's a guy, uh, he, he, if, if he hadn't had his accident on set, uh, he could have gone to do a, a whole lot more. I mean, hell, he could have made the Crow sequels better than... <laughs> I like the, I like the Crow 3 Salvations, but when you get to Edward Furlong, you're going down the... You're going down the, uh, the Hollywood list there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. If you have... You have Edward Furlong going, Pull up the Raven nevermore, motherfucker! Like, really? That's a line in the movie. That's a line in the fourth Crow movie. I couldn't believe it. I did not, opted not to see that one. <laughs> you no. Know, just, just stay away. They don't know. Oh they don't know how to fight. They don't know how to shoot fights. Uh, but yes, the third one, Eric Mabius and uh, and uh, uh, Kurt Kirsten Dunst. It it ended up being the first in the series to go directly to. Uh, directly to video, but it doesn't feel like a direct to video movie, you know. Especially during that time period where everything, if it went to video, you knew it had to be cheap. No, right. this had a this had a budget behind it, and people who were dead serious about not making a crow sequel that looked that felt and played out like a, a music video. Uh, I don't know about that, but I am dreading the sequel. I mean, not the sequel, but the remake. 
Oh boy. Yeah. They're remaking that. Yeah, with Jason they're Momoa. Getting, they're getting Aquaman to play the, the same dude. Yeah. Jason Momoa? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to get Mr. Big and Buck to play basically the, the co character in this next movie, so. Yeah, because that's what you want. You want to see someone big and buff as Schwarzenegger in my makeup. Um, I don't know. Um, I didn't see Justice League. How is his? How are his fight scenes? I don't care. I opt not to see any more DC movies. Thank you very much. Okay, fair enough. Um, uh, I mean, he he can do he can do fight scenes. I've seen him in other. Uh, that you know, he has the athleticism to be able to do it. You say, have you been watching Game of, Games of Thrones then? Well, I mean, yeah, I watched Game of Thrones. Yes, yes. I do. But also, uh, Stargate Atlantis, is where I first saw him. Oh, that's right. That's right. They're gonna so, surprise there too. If they're gonna pick out Game of Thrones actors, why don't they uh, pick that guy that went on to play Iron Fist? He needs a hit. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Finn Jones? Finn... Finn something, rather. That's the one good thing I can really say about those series of what, uh, that series and why I kept watching it was just the fight scenes were amazing. But, yeah. Um, uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll wait and see uh, what they do with the... Uh, to, to see if we get a, a trailer for the Crow movie before I pass judgment. Here's something I came across. Uh, oh, boy. And this goes back to a previous episode that we talked about. Was uh, I part of this episode? No, this was the this was the uh, the BC era before Cody. There. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you for well, that. I don't care. I don't care. Um, PC. PC era. That's awesome. One of the... Uh, uh, one of the, the movies that Brandon Lee was, uh, was scheduled to do at one point was uh, a, a script called uh, Simon Says. Oh, that would have been... That would have been Die Hard with a Vengeance. Which eventually became Die Hard with a Vengeance. Huh. Well, what part was he to play? Um, he was going to play the part that eventually John McClane was written into. Oh. Yeah, hero. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hero. Oh. Uh, now I'm, now I'm kind of conflicted, because that's actually my favorite Die Hard movie, apart from the first one. It's the only good sequel. Mm-hmm. Oh. Speaking of un unsung heroes of, uh... Of martial arts, here's a here's a name I almost passed up here, Mark DeCascos. <laughs> Mark DeCascos, yeah. <laughs> watch him in uh, watch him hit in uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf. Actually, my the reason why I I consider him uh, particularly unsung is, yeah, he that the. It's amazing that around the time Double Dragon comes out, that's one of the one of the most panned films of his career. One of the most panned films of his of video games ever made. Uh, he actually does he actually does another movie around the same time that nobody heard of called o Only the Strong, which hi highlighted uh, Capoeira. Capoeira, uh, Dangerous Minds with Capoeira. Dangerous Minds with Capoeira is a uh, is a school teacher that uh, uh, that uh, teaches all these punk kids uh, order and discipline by teaching them how to fight. Yep, which makes sense. But if you watch the movie, you, you get the you get the idea that okay, he's teaching these kids order and discipline, and it's kind of the it's one of those great uh, feel good. I want to I want to take these punk kids and pull them up uh, and inspire them type of movies you know one of those feel good teacher teacher movies <laughs> but you know what I love about that movie mm. so the, the premise being you know he's helping these kids and one of them has an older brother or something that runs this evil gang in the area mm -hmm. who just so happens to also fight with capoeira so he's teaching these kids capoeira and his opponent 
happens to be a guy that just so happens to also know this, at the time at least, somewhat obscure martial art. Mm -hmm. I found this interesting. Is that how you made yeah. that? Is that how you made the connection from Brandon to Mark? Is because he was in the Crow TV show. Oh, there's the oh, there's that's... the connection. There is the oh. there's something I also I forgot about. I never saw the TV show, but yeah, yes, yeah. he did. He did take the place of uh, Eric Eric Draven. He did take up that role in the Crow TV show. Yep, the Crow, Stairway to Heaven. There's your connection between Brendan Lee and him. <laughs> and uh, before we stray too far from Capoeira, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a couple of good instances in martial arts films. Uh, one being I already mentioned, uh, Tom Young Goon, uh, the Protector, uh -huh. uh, and then the other is Undisputed Three. Both Latif Crowder, who's a stuntman, a martial artist, uh, amazing with Capoeira. Simply amazing. He does really well in those fight scenes. So look him up. I'm sure Latif, you can Google. Latif, Latif Crowder. Yeah. He's been in other movies as a stuntman or martial artist or whatnot, but look up Latif Crowder Capoeira, and you'll find his fight scene in The Protector and probably the one in uh, Undisputed 3. Okay, he's got dreadlocks. Yeah, if you've ever played Tekken, he actually looks like Eddie. Actually, I think he played Eddie Gordo in the second movie. <laughs> oh. oh let me wait, wait. Let me see this. Let me see this. Because he, when I first saw him in The Protector, I was like, "Holy shit, this guy looks like Eddie Gordo." And then, I'm yes, sure he he was. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. And we. And Mike and Mike and I we watched that movie for a previous episode I think, video game movies. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't so. like it at all, but yeah. I think so. The Capoeira, the same with Deep Crowder, uh, he's pretty damn awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, can't argue there. Um, actually, in terms of Mark DeCascos, I was gonna say a film that he did that I really enjoyed that nobody talks about is Drive from 1997. Which is, uh, it's uh, him, uh, Kareem Campbell, and uh, and also, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, let's see. Where... Brittany Murphy? Brittany Murphy, yes. Before, yeah, before, yeah, taken from us too soon. But anyway... Uh, yeah, it's DeCascos and uh, Campbell are two guys trying to get to L.A. Uh, Mark DeCascos is uh, is a, a Chinese secret agent trying to escape from the Chinese government, uh, who put uh, who put uh, a mechanical device on his heart that uh, that juices him up. He's a cyborg. Sounds a little like Crank. Uh, it was Crank, only done better. Oh. Um, oh. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, I love those movies. Uh, yeah, man. And, you know, we shouldn't discount Jason Statham as a good yeah. martial artist either. Speaking yes. of martial artist. Yes. He is, surprised. he is really good. Every time I see him, he is really good. Uh, yeah, the Transporter c films... Transported the Expendables films whenever he has a fight scene. He had a fight scene against Scott Atkins in one of them. It was really mm -hmm. good. Um, but yes, uh, you know it's it's Kadeem Hardison is the is the guy I'm thinking about. He was a comic back in the '90s. Uh, um, uh, he's trying to trying to get to LA where there's a doctor that's going to remove this thing from his heart because it's slowly killing him. And Kadeem Hardison is a guy. Uh, plays a guy who he inadvertently ropes into this uh, this adventure, and it becomes a bit of a buddy comedy uh, after after a while, kind of in the the same vein of uh, *Leave a Weapon* and uh, and *Rush Hour*. It was *Rush Hour* before *Rush Hour*, I think. <laughs> *Rush Hour* meets *Crank*. But it was. <laughs> But it was 
filmed on an extremely low budget, and not too many people remember it or even or even saw it. So it's got to go. That's one I've never heard of. I remember watching it years ago, and I was just like, "Mark DeCascos is amazing. Is amazing in his in his fight scenes in this movie. Why? Uh, what whatever happened here? He was." So, he was originally set to play as the Red Ranger, Victor Lee, in Bioman, produced by Saban, which never got picked up, but were later involved into Mighty Morphin Bottom Rangers. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh, he would have... His career His career would have been done there. Yeah. But no disrespect to the Power Rangers franchise, but did any, did any of those guys ever... Have much of a career after that? Uh, some, not like major careers, you know, but you know, doing okay these days, more or less. Uh, the Pink yeah. Ranger did some stuff. I remember seeing her on some other shows. Yeah. 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 Some have um, good careers after that, which is um, sort of, sort of. Um, <laughs> I mean that. I mean that's a whole nother thing too with the Power Rangers. That's. That's, that's my childhood, so watch what you say, bud. <laughs> it's my childhood as well, but it's just it's another example of fighting as well. Yeah. It's another example of borrowing fighting from another country <laughs> to try and make your yeah. own show. <laughs> only, 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 very good only, example. Like, only for like the first two seasons at most. Then they had a change series, which they started all over again with borrowing footage. And then it... Uh, and then they were just copying from other from other TV shows again with similar wardrobes. So, yeah, yep. Uh, they found a way to keep it going. I've actually started looking into the original Super Sentai series. Good stuff. I I will say this: Super Sentai kicks Power Rangers ass. I will say that right now. Really? You don't say. I didn't uh, know I that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I I watched. Uh... Hang on, hang on. I got. I got. I know. I know. I... <laughs> oh my god, I cannot say the name. Give me a second, let me look it up, because I have it on my computer. Uh, it, uh, it was Pirate Sentai Go Guy, Joe. That was the first series I watched. I actually read subtitles, which is something I don't do much of. This show got me reading subtitles. And I watched it like, they could never get away with that shit on Power Rangers. Never. No. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There are some martial art movies that incorporate fantasy into their films a lot. Some say they're fantasy films. I mean, <laughs> for crying out loud, in our fantasy film episode, we had uh, Malcolm Ray as a guest, and he chose to talk about Kung Fu Panda as the uh, fantasy <laughs> films. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I, I can see why. I can see why. <laughs> so, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, uh... There's a lot of mystical fantasy elements, you know, you can incorporate with martial arts fighting, you know. I mean, even Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is sort yeah. of fantasy elements incorporated where they, they basically step on air, you know, to... Oh, yeah. They fly, I mean, they, mm -hmm. you know, float through the air. Uh, you know, he's standing on the end of a bamboo tree that's, like, bending over. I mean, that's, that is a fantasy element, even mm -hmm. though, you know doesn't have to be dragons or monsters or creatures but you know these kind of like powers yep. and abilities Power, that come with yep. martial arts that's what it is powers and abilities basically if you have a if, if you have characters that are flying and fighting each other yeah mm -hmm. just yeah yeah then there's the uh kind of the debated topic that we sort of had in our group chat before doing this podcast talking about whether samurai cinema is included with martial arts. Uh, I mean, it, it depends on how you define a martial arts movie. Mm. I mean, the martial arts movie to me is a movie where you're watching it primarily for the martial arts sequences. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's, you know, there could be other, there could be a story and characters and what, whatnot that are also engaging, but you're watching it for the action, the, the martial arts. And most samurai films that I've seen, uh, you watch more for the characters.
character, the the story, uh, not so much their sword play. I mean, there are those that exist, but if you're talking like the, you know, when I think samurai films, I think of Kurosawa, and you know his films, and I would not really qualify those as martial arts films. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have technically they're using you know, the swords and they're fighting, and it's technically a martial art. But they're not really martial arts films. That's not what you watch them for. Oh, what about Zatoichi? Yeah, see, Zatoichi is the one that sort of is uh, a bit of both, especially the later films. Like, the very first one is a bit more of the traditional samurai style. Uh, this is more closer to a western. Uh, do this but with a sword. One, yeah. <laughs> but as they go on and on and on, I mean, there's like 20 six of them uh, with the original guy uh, Shintaro Katsu uh, mm-hmm. and you know as they keep going they get a little more elaborate and they kind of evolve because it started in the how oh, was it the late 50s or early 60s that the series began and so martial arts films as we know it didn't really exist like that quite yet uh, and it was sort of developing and Zatoichi sort of went with the times and all of a sudden he's like slicing off limbs and blood's flying everywhere and there's he's taking on like 20 guys at once and with his little uh cane sword i mean it's good stuff if you haven't if you haven't seen them before um i have actually uh, i've been he working has it right there the on the wall uh-huh. i've been working through the set again from criterion collection uh all of the original series with shintaro katsu aside from the very last one which i have separately over there so I'm most of the way through. Is that the one from 2003? Is that uh, the Blind Swordsman? No, that's the the remake uh, from B. Takashi, or Takashi Kitano. Takashi Kitano. Kitano, yeah. That's he what also I'm... beat Takashi. Oh. Uh, but yeah, so that was a remake. But there was one in eighty eighty something. Uh, it was Shintaro Katsu's last one. And he did it like, a, like a decade after the previous one. But during the span of that time, he did a Zatoichi TV show. I mean, the Zatoichi series is huge. If you incorporate all the movies, and the TV show that was like a hundred episodes, and then the final movie, all with the same actor playing that same character, uh, pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Now, if you if you have a if you have a, a a role, oh shit, oh Shintaro Katsu. I was oh, well. <laughs> That's what you're trying to say. I was looking, at, I was uh, I was typing in Shintaro Katsu. <laughs> Shintaro, Shintaro Katsu. <laughs> no disrespect. Was I, I was was I not enunciating well enough? Sorry. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think every, well, every country to a, every country to a, a certain degree, has its own uh, its own form of martial arts. Uh, we don't we just don't really uh, talk about it uh, too much. Sometimes, uh, Ru- believe it or not, I think Russian Russia has their their own martial arts. Yeah, system. sambo. The sambo. And uh, French, has here. French has Savat, uh, and now, if you want to include, uh, God, what's your, the free running uh, uh, parkour? Yeah, parkour. If you want to include that as a martial art, they have that now too. Um, if you can, it's sort of a, it, it's sort of tough uh, to decide whether or not that's a, a sport or a or a fighting style now. So, <laughs> but. Uh, um, District B thirteen. Speaking of French mm-hmm. martial arts movie. Uh, yes. District thirteen. Uh, crazy, the, crazy the good action movie. It's a lot of fun. Um, we have our own martial arts over here. I forget. Uh, the the army. Uh, has uh, uh, the army has uh, some specific training that they that they give to. Uh, to our soldiers, that's now classified as a as a martial art. Uh, yeah. But usually, 
Um, I, I I wish I came up, I come across a, a an article on on Cracked. Uh, dot com years and years and years ago about martial arts martial uh, something like uh, uh, martial arts you didn't know existed that will break that will kick the crap out of you <laughs> um, and um, yeah we're 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 set to break bones in our in our military if we need to uh, we're where where does Krav Maga originate? Uh, that's Israeli, I believe. Israeli martial arts. Yeah, Krav Maga. Krav Maga is a military self defense and fighting. Israeli very, defense forces, yes. Very brutal, from what I understand. I've seen. So there's a show called Human Weapons, or used to be, uh, where these two guys went around and uh, sampled all these different martial arts from different countries. Like each episode was an hour. They would have some experts from the martial art come on and teach a few of the maneuvers and you know and then at the end they would have to fight an expert from that i mean it was kind of it, it was interesting and educational mm -hmm. uh what is mike doing <laughs> oh he's yeah, counting he's down for us it's bonus round now talk fast talk fast talk <laughs> fast when uh lt actually uh, my buddy lt actually trained for a while in krav maga believe it or not <laughs> so Good martial arts movies. Any any other speed? <laughs> How much time was left on the timer? I didn't even see. We squeezed anything out of the last minute. We have like 20 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, uh, 6. Watch more martial arts movies. 5, watch good. 4, 3, <laughs> I'll have to watch for, uh, 2, Rising now. 1. Michael J. White and that uh, Crowder guy. <laughs> the Teeth Crowder. Mm hmm. Yes, there are plenty of martial arts movies. There's plenty to talk about in that genre. We even we just touched a tidbit of it in this episode. We can do a part two in the near future if we want to. I mean, I was even I was gonna mention like the Shaw Brothers production company that would produce all these movies and you know and other directors and actors. So uh, if you guys want us to talk about more, more martial arts movies, you can leave a comment below and let me know. Um, we could discuss a little bit more about Golden Harvest. Example. Yes, yes, and I, I, I really wanted to actually mention TMNT. I mean, ninjas. Uh, let's, uh, let's let's give that. Let's give you that. Let's give you that, please. <laughs> I mean, ninjas. You feel like you just sort of sat in the corner a long time and listened. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's normally the case for this podcast. Sometimes in different topics, I figure I won't highlight you guys talking about the topic because. Sometimes we need to change things up on the podcast itself, because um, it's always great. Because I knew you guys were like itching, because you guys really love the genre, and I wanted to, you guys just to talk and talk and talk, and I love it. People will love it. <laughs> give... well, I sure learned hell of a lot. I mean, if you guys like this episode, please give this video a like. Um, also, subscribe for more episodes, you know, like this. And uh, if you subscribe, make sure you click that bell icon because you'll be notified when I upload a new video, of course. Uh, the next episode, as a tease, uh, we're doing a, another open discussion type of episode because it's a little bit different than we normally do. Uh, we're going to talk about movie villains. Movie villains. So we can <laughs> talk about good villains, bad villains, uh, weird villains, just movie villains in general when it comes either from Darth Vader all the way to the most random <laughs> villains out there so a little bit different thing going on for us uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching and uh, long live cinema folks <laughs> ciao for now see you later I will find you. <laughs>